Hey y'all, so today I'm going to be talking about one of my absolute favorite topics, especially right now, and that is obscure TV shows that I really love. And as I was creating this list, I really had to think about what I meant by obscure, because my personal taste in TV could be described as singular and not incredibly mainstream. And what I mean by that is I don't tend to watch shows that are like super big, like Game of Thrones, um, what else is there? I haven't seen Orange is the New Black. I mean, there are definitely shows that are like big names that I've seen. I've seen all of Sherlock, I've seen all of The Office, um, I've seen all of Project Runway. But like, I don't tend to watch like the main major shows. And that's not me being a hipster, that's just I tend to really enjoy, this gets into the singular part, I tend to really enjoy reality competitions. Like if I were to list off my favorite TV shows, which I have and I will be doing a video about it, I have a blog post on it, but if I were to list my favorite TV shows, I'm pretty sure that most of them, like at least half of them, are reality competition shows. Like I used to be like, oh no, I like scripted shows, like I like them just as much as I like my reality competitions, but I have come to admit the fact that my favorite form of TV is the reality competition. Like it has been for a very long time. American Idol got me started young back in like second or third grade. And that's how it stayed for most of my life. Like I love reality competitions. And while not all of these obscure TV shows I'm going to be talking about today are reality competitions, the vast majority of them are. So I've tried to really narrow it down to the reality competitions that I consider to be the most obscure that I watch and enjoy. Now, there were a few shows that I considered for this list that I didn't end up putting on it because I didn't think they were obscure enough. Um, a couple of those are like The Taste and RuPaul's Drag Race because those like The Taste was on like ABC I think so it's not like this like random TV show. It was on a major network. It just didn't do incredibly well, even though it's amazing. Um, and then RuPaul's Drag Race is slightly more of a niche thing, but it has a very big fan base. So like for stuff like that, there are shows that I didn't include because I didn't think they were obscure enough. But the ones that I'm going to be talking about today are fairly obscure. That being said, I also wouldn't be surprised if you have heard of some of these shows, especially if you are into kind of random reality competitions, because I stumbled across these just kind of organically, I guess, and in different forms or fashions throughout the years. So it's not like these shows are like ones that you have to dig to find. They're just ones that I really enjoy slash have watched all the way through that are not incredibly well known. So enough rambling, let's just jump into the list. So I'm gonna start with ones that are slightly more mainstream that more people might have heard of and then transition into the weirder ones. Um, there are two that I'm gonna save for last, one of which is one of my all-time favorite shows ever, like top five TV shows of all time, and another of which is just so incredibly strange that I'm surprised it made it to four seasons. The first show is Work of Art, The Next Great Artist. This is a show that ran for two seasons on Bravo. Bravo is definitely a place that I have watched a lot. I've spent a lot of time on the Bravo channel, and this is one of the shows that I discovered through there. Guess what? It's a reality competition. Essentially, it's just how it sounds. A group of artists are brought in and they compete with their artwork to win, I think, $100,000 and a showing at a major museum. This is one that I'm actually currently re-watching right now with my roommate. Um, she's never seen the show, but I was kind of like, hey, it's a reality competition. I think you might like it. Let's watch it together. So I am re-watching season one with her right now, and I'm hoping she wants to watch it enough that she'll re-watch season two with me, because I've seen season one several times. Um, I have definite favorites. Love Miles. He's so quirky and hilarious, um, but I haven't seen two season two in a very long time. Like I think I watched season two through one full time, and I never watched it again. Um, and that was in 2011 that it was on. Um, I watched both seasons as they were on, by the way. Um, but yeah, I really enjoy the show. It's a really interesting look at the way that artists construct their art, and there are a lot of really intriguing personalities as well. So following the same train of thought, the next show is another Bravo reality competition, but this one is one that only made it one season, and that is Platinum Hit. Platinum Hit was a reality competition for pop songwriters of 
any variety. So there was one guy who did kind of John Mayer-esque songs and then other people who just did hip-hop and rap. So it was a really interesting mix of styles and every week they actually had to collaborate on songs. So that was really interesting to see. The fact that this show did not get a second season was one of the most devastating things on the planet to me. I think that this show first aired in early 2011, like spring of 2011, I think might have been spring of 2012, but I watched it as it was airing because as a musician I was really interested to see these pop songwriters um, and there were definitely some really interesting personalities on the show and I thought it was super cool. My personal favorite was Johnny. Um, I thought that he was super cool. He was the John Mayer-esque guy and I actually still have some of the music that was written on the show on my iTunes and on my phone, um, namely Bet in My Life um, and I also have Walk Through Walls and uh, Where I'm Meant to Be. Um, those are all ones that Johnny co-wrote. Um, <laughs> Walk Through Walls is really fun though because that was a challenge where they had to take um, one form of music, like one genre of music, and mash it with another genre of music. And uh, I think that they had rap and opera. So that was really interesting. But yeah, I really love the show, but it didn't get a ton of viewers and it got less and less throughout the season. So they just went ahead and axed it, which made me so sad. And one last Bravo show while we're at it. This one has three seasons and that is Sheer Genius. Sheer Genius was another reality competition, this time for hairdressers. Just as it seems like it would be, a group of hairstylists brought in and they competed to win, again, I think $100,000 and some sort of contract with Nexus, maybe? I don't remember. But Sheer Genius Season 1 is actually how Tabitha Coffee came to fame, and I almost included her show Tabitha Takes Over or Tabitha Salon Takeover on this list because it's not a super incredibly mainstream show, but it does have four seasons and it is fairly well known, so I didn't include it on this list, but I felt like Sheer Genius was obscure enough to count. As far as my favorites, this is lower down than a lot of the ones on this list, but it is one that I have seen every single episode of and I did really enjoy it. I think I watched seasons two and three as they were airing, so I have I watched the show when it was on and I have really enjoyed it and I have rewatched season one a few times. It's been a while since I've seen seasons two and three though. And I meant to talk about like how I discovered all of these shows and for the three Bravo competitions that I've talked about, I discovered them because I watched Top Chef. Top Chef is one of my absolute favorite TV shows of all time. I started watching it in junior high and I would see commercials for all of these different shows like Sheer Genius, uh, Work of Art, The Next Great Artist, um, Platinum Hit, and when I saw commercials for these shows I was like, ooh this is cool, another Bravo competition, I gotta watch it. So. That was a pretty easy way for me to find these shows. Moving on to yet another reality competition, this one not on Bravo, and that is Who Done It. Who Done It aired for a single season in the summer of 2013, and I think it was on ABC. I found this one, like with the other ones, through a commercial. I was watching ABC, I'm pretty sure my family and I were like watching Wheel of Fortune or something, and a preview came on for Who Done It and it sparked my interest, so I decided that I wanted to watch it. So the concept of Who Done It is very similar to And Then There Were None by Agatha Christie. Essentially, there are a group of contestants and at the very beginning one of them dies and they have to figure out how the murder happened. And they're told that one of the people in the group is actually who done it like they are the murderer who is killing everyone and every episode the guests try to figure out how the murder was committed and whoever is the most wrong is eliminated slash killed and it continues on and they have to solve that person's murder and then the next person and so on and so forth and the idea is that the murderer is one of the contestants so you can't always trust everyone that you're talking to and you can't trust that you are not like working with the person who is secretly the murderer. I really enjoyed this show because it was just really cheesy. Like it wasn't that great quality, but I personally really enjoyed it. It was just silly enough for me to get a laugh out of it and just serious enough for me to be really curious about trying to figure out who done it. And I also have to give it credit for helping me discover the show that I'm going to talk about at the end that is one of my favorite TV shows of all time. It's it, that it holds a special place in my heart for that purpose alone, but it's also a really fun show and I'm sad that it only got one season, um, but there are a couple of very average books 
written in the same style of the TV show, so you could definitely read those if you want to. So now moving on to another reality competition, kind of, um, that only has one season, but it might have more because the first season aired at the beginning of 2015, and that is Sing It On. So Sing It On is a reality TV show that in season one followed five acapella, college acapella groups as they competed in the collegiate acapella competition, ICCA. So it's kind of a reality competition, but it's really just more following these people as they compete in this major acapella competition. It's actually kind of funny how I discovered this one. Sarah and I were sitting on the couch last semester, um, I want to say it was like back in September maybe, and we were just like scrolling on Netflix on her phone, and we saw this show called Sing It On, and we looked at it and we like read what it was about, and we love acapella, um, we love pentatonics, and Sarah was really into acapella groups in high school, and um, so when we saw this, we were like, oh, this is kind of funny. Like, maybe we'll watch the first 10 minutes of it. It's probably really cheesy. And we sat there and we watched an entire episode. And we were like, oh, man, we can't stop watching this. And so we, like, pulled it up on one of our laptops and plugged it into the TV. And we just, we watched the whole season. Like, I don't think we watched every episode back to back, but we made it through the entire season in, like, two days. Granted, it's only eight episodes, but we just got really hooked and we fell in love with these acapella groups and we really wanted to see how they did. And it was just really, really awesome. And we fell in love with the show and I have watched it at least three times now, like, all the way through. So... I really love it and I hope that there will be a season two. Also, I love the Nor'easters. I love their cover of Jaywalk. It's been on constant repeat this week. And I also love one of their sets that they have up on YouTube. It's really cool, you should check it out. So one last show that has only one season and that is actually not a reality competition. It is, I think, the only non-reality show on this list. And that is Harper's Island. I can't remember when Harper's Island aired. I wanna say it was early 2009. Um, it was when I was in high school and I know it was during spring. Um, but the premise of the show is that the main character is from this island called Harper's Island and she left the island after the string of murders happened that involved um, her mom. Her mom got killed. She's returning to this island for her best friend's wedding and she really doesn't want to go back to the island but once she gets there, people start dying off one by one. It's been a while since I've watched the show, so I don't remember full detail, but I do remember really enjoying it, but like Who Done It, I thought it was just a little cheesy, and that was another thing that made me really love it. It's also really interesting to try and figure out who it is that's killing everyone. Um, once again, that's one of my favorite things, is to try to figure out who this secret killer is. Um, but yeah, I really enjoyed the show. It's only got one season, obviously, because, you know, everyone dies. <laughs> um, but it's a super cool show. Um, it was on Netflix for a while and then it got taken off again. I was really sad. But it's an interesting one and it's only one season so it's great to binge watch. So one last show before I jump into the last two that I'm going to talk about. And this is actually one that I used to watch when I was like a preteen. Um, and it is another reality competition, but this time including teenagers. And it was on PBS Kids and that show is Endurance. And I found out about Endurance pretty organically. I would watch some stuff on PBS Kids or I'd flip channels with PBS Kids and I'd see commercials for it, so I decided to check it out one day. I wanna say that Endurance had either five or six seasons and I have seen every episode. So the show is kind of Survivor-esque in the way that it's a group of teenagers that are brought out to the middle of nowhere, whether that's at a beach or like in the middle of the jungle, um, and they are paired up, a boy and a girl, and given a certain color for the pair of them, and they then compete to try to win the whole thing, and I think it's temple pieces that they have to get, and they have to get all 13 of them? It's been a while since I've seen the show. But I got super into endurance back in, like, late elementary school and early junior high. Like, I don't think that it was a super popular show back when I was a kid, but I got real invested in it. I think I started watching in the middle of season three, and then I watched the last two seasons as they aired, possibly the last three, because I don't remember how many seasons there were, but I loved the show. <laughs> I even started writing an endurance fanfic where they had like an all-star season and they brought back all of my favorite contestants. And like, I had my favorite contestants from like 
different seasons paired up. So I basically like created my own fan fiction version of an All Stars Endurance. <laughs> How stupid and cheesy is that? Like I loved this show. Like that's one thing about me is if I get really into something, I get really into something. And I got really into Endurance. Like I watched all the reruns when they were on. I have seen every a single episode and I don't even think they did reruns a ton. I just, I found them and I watched them and I got really invested in this show. And that is hilarious to me. Like I said, I haven't watched this show in ages and I don't even know if like you can find it online anymore, but it was just something that I really enjoyed and <laughs> I really liked it. That was definitely like up there in my favorite TV shows ever back when I was like in sixth grade, I want to say. Like, I don't remember when I watched this, but it had to be like between fifth and seventh grade. So now moving on to the last two shows that I'm going to talk about, one of which, like I said, is one of my all-time favorite TV shows, and the other of which is just possibly the weirdest show that I have ever watched. And I don't think very many people know about it at all, because I've tried looking stuff up recently, and there's just not that much online about it. <laughs> and I made my friends watch it both freshman year and recently, and they have all just stared at me in confusion and thought that I was so weird. Um, so let's just go ahead and talk about that one first. That is Solitary. Honestly, I don't remember how I came across Solitary. I'm assuming that I was flipping channels one day and I somehow stumbled across the Fox Reality Channel. Yes, that is a channel that existed. I will put the logo up here. And I guess I just found it that way and I watched an episode and I was like, hmm, reality competition, this is interesting. And it is the weirdest show ever. I really enjoy it and I've seen every single episode of it, but it's so weird. It's basically just how it sounds. Every season there are nine people who are put into individual pods in solitary confinement and have to compete against each other. Or against themselves, as the computer Val says. Every episode they go through a test where they can earn exemption from the treatment, as well as random other things that they do in their pods. I mean, they are in solitary confinement for who knows how long the show is on, and they're deprived of sleep most of the time, they're fed meal bars, occasionally they get real food when they get some sort of reward, and then they're put through these awful treatments and tests. <laughs> and it's just the most messed up TV show that I've ever heard of, because like, solitary confinement on its own can do major psychological damage, but on top of all these tests and treatments that they have to do, like they had to see psychologists when they got off the show. Like when they were eliminated, the first person they talked to was a psychologist. And one of the best aspects of the show is some of the complete weirdos that you get on there. Like sometimes there are a bunch of people that are like totally normal, but there was one guy on season three that like made his own pod in his living room before going on the show because he was so obsessed with the show. And there was another guy on season three that like he had to pin these like flesh pins as they called them onto his fingers. And he was just sitting there like playing with that. It, it's, just, it's a messed up show, but I love it. And yes, there were four seasons of this show made. The only reason that the show died is because the Fox reality channel became defunct. Like, they considered continuing on and making a fifth season of this show once the TV channel, like, died. Like, I think, oh, what channel was it? What, I want to say, like, whatever channel normally airs, like, American Ninja Warrior or, like, I don't remember, like, G4? Like, one of, like that, that channel was talking about picking it up, and they didn't end up doing it. But like this show could have continued on past this channel that died. But yeah, like I said, this show is so weird and messed up and they have to do so many weird things. Like I mentioned, there was one time when they had to put these metal like uh, clothes pins on their body. Val called them flesh clips. And like they had to pin them to different parts of their body and just leave it there. Or they had to sit like on a bowling ball for a certain amount of time without putting any of their weight on their feet. Um, they had to like, gorge themselves on sweets after um, not having very much food at all. It's like all these crazy things that are meant to push them to their breaking point. And since they are competing against themselves and they don't ever meet any of the other contestants, the way that they quit is that like they reach their limit in a treatment and they push the red button. And if they're the first person in that treatment to push the red button, then they're eliminated. Yeah, it's just, like I said, a very messed up show. And it's actually not hard to find online. Um, I think seasons three and four are both on YouTube. Seasons one and two aren't hard to find. However, 
anyone talking about the show is very hard to find because like I said, this is definitely, I think, the most obscure of the TV shows that I'm talking about in this video. And I have not come across anyone in my real life or really anyone online that has seen this show. It's just a very obscure one. So moving on from the weirdness that is solitary into one of my favorite TV shows of all time. And this is the TV show that I actually discovered through Who Done It. Um, I was watching Who Done It and I realized that no one had really posted anything online about the show in the way of blogs or reviews. And so I just decided to start talking about it on my blog. And in the comments of my blog, someone suggested The Mole to me. And I was curious because The Mole has kind of some of the same concepts as Who Done It, and I decided to check it out and I got obsessed. So the premise of The Mole is that there is a group of contestants who are working together in different challenges to earn money for the group pot. However, one of the contestants is not a contestant at all, but a saboteur placed among them by production who is being paid to sabotage different tasks that they have to do to keep the group from earning money. And the actual contestant's job is to discover who among them is the mole. At the end of every episode, there is a test that they have to take asking questions about the mole's identity, and whoever does the worst on that test is eliminated. So the mole had five American seasons, two of which are celebrity versions and three of which are just normal people, and I have seen all five seasons all the way through multiple times, and I love it so much that I have watched three Australian seasons as well as part of a British season. And the only reason I haven't watched more of those seasons is because I accidentally spoil myself for who the mole is, and honestly at that point it's not worth watching because it's so much more fun to sit there and keep guessing about who the saboteur is, and then once you find out, go back and rewatch the entire season to see everything you missed. I know I sound like an obsessed crazy person when I talk about the show, but it is one of my all-time favorites. This is season one, which I have on DVD, found it on Amazon for pretty cheap. Also, fun fact, if this sways you to watch it in any way, Anderson Cooper hosts the first two seasons. Yes, that Anderson Cooper, and he is hilarious and adorable, and I love him as a host on this show. But yeah, like I said, I absolutely love the whole, like, traitor among the group that you have to figure out thing, and this is done so beautifully in this show, and I think that it's really clever, and if there was one reality show that I would go on, it is this one, because they get to travel all over the world doing these fun, like, weird tasks that they have to do, and it's just so much fun. Like, they went bungee jumping a few times, like, they had to jump out of airplanes, like, it's just, they do such cool stuff, and it's also, like, this whole, like, psychological thing where you have to figure out who is playing you, and it's just so cool. If this seems like something that you'd be interested in and you're in the mood for something from the early 2000s, like definitely check this out because this show is amazing. I love everything about it and it's actually kind of funny because there's a very very small group of very devoted fans who keep trying to get the show back on the air and I would love that because the first two seasons with Anderson Cooper were in 2001 and 2002 and then there was a break and then they had two celebrity seasons. And then season five came along in like 2008. Like, so there was a huge gap. So I'm holding out hope <laughs> that eight years after the random revival of this show, we will somehow get another revival of this show. Will it happen? Probably not, but I am going to hold out hope because I love this show. So yeah, those are my favorite obscure TV shows. I apologize for how long this probably was. I'm pretty sure this is going to be a long video, and I know it's not a book-related video, but honestly, I just wanted to take a chance to talk to you guys about some of my favorite random TV shows, because I've really been in the mood for those shows lately. Like, I've been watching work of art, solitary, and sheer genius over the past week, just like off and on. I've been watching like those three shows, and it really just got me in the mood to talk about these shows that I really love that are really obscure and random. And I am so glad that I did this because it's just something that I really enjoy talking about. As always, I will leave links down in the description to my blog, Twitter, and Goodreads. Please add me as a friend on Goodreads. I would love to be friends with all of you. Like, comment, subscribe, all that jazz. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!